Good evening, my name is Selective Bloom and I'll be your host for tonight. Tonight we'll talk about the history of storytelling and why Dungeons and Dragons is a fascinating evolution of oral storytelling. Or written, but that's not as awesome as the oral version. In this video, we'll start from the beginning, so we definitely cannot cover everything, but hopefully we can cover the important points. So yeah, this video is a combination of D&D video and history video. So, without further ado, let's start at the beginning. Where men gathered around fire in their caves. It is said that storytelling developed not long after the development of language itself. No, of course, since we are talking about time before recorded history, it is impossible to prove. I, myself, like the idea the other way around. That men develop language in an attempt to tell a story. It doesn't have to be something complicated, it can be something simple like Oh, there's a fucking wolf in that cave. That works. Fun fact, we might not be the first species that invented storytelling. Again, it is impossible to prove, but let me tell you something. It is known that the scenes depicted on those cave walls were associated with some kind of oral storytelling. And the oldest cave painting here behind me? was made by Neanderthals. Earlier stories like these usually was used to explain natural phenomena, to teach the next generation how to hunt and how to preserve their tradition and rituals. They were full of values and messages and, you know, it teaches them how to act in certain situation. And this aspect of story remains until this day. Of course, I want to add that they filled in things that don't quite understand yet at their time with gods and supernatural being. Something we still do with religion actually, so that doesn't change. Now, talking about oral storytelling. You might be wondering how those stories stay relatively consistent. I mean, you know how the game of telephone goes, and you think that these oral stories should be more beyond recognition after a few thousand years. Huh. Let me tell you about an African tradition of story ownership. Now, what the fuck is it? Is it some copyright stuff? Not really. It's a concept that a particular story have an owner. And only the owner of this story have the true version of the story. Now, other people can still listen and spread the story, but the story still isn't theirs. If there's any discrepancy between two versions of the same story, or there's some details that they're not sure about, they will go back and ask the owner for the true version of the story. The ownership can be passed down from person to person with some rituals, and actually they have a story about uh, this particular ritual. They said it's a story about if you didn't hear it the first time, ask. That is the title of the story, you can't guess what it teaches. Anyway, that doesn't mean the story does not change with time. It is supposed to change and evolve with time. The story of Anansi, for example. Oh, this is Anansi, by the way, the spider god, the owner of all stories in African tradition. The story for Anansi, for example. If it is told today, it will incorporate the smartphones and the internets and stuff like that. But no, some ignorant bastard decided to write it down and the story stake dates. What a cunt. Well, that's what happened when you bestow a written form to an oral story. It stagnates. Now, there's also some oral stories that survive until this day exactly because they're written and recorded so early in time. Some examples for oral stories that's more famous for their written form are the Epic of Gilgamesh and the Odyssey. And the Odyssey. 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 The way that he talks, whack. Yeah, surprise, they were oral stories at some point. And with that, let's move on to our next step of evolution. Written storytelling. Well, fuck. Almost everything ever written is some form of storytelling. So it's not like I can cover everything in a short video. 
scientific reports, news, magazines, novels, fuck, even your blog and reddit posts are some kind of written storytelling. Here's the deal. I'll talk about some of the important ones, not everything, but most of you are familiar with this form of storytelling anyway, so fuck it. <laughs> Let's start with the oldest surviving tale known to man, the Epic of Gilgamesh. It is created a series of poems about King Gilgamesh around 2000 years BCE and then compiled into one singular work a couple hundred years later. Then we discovered some surviving copies in the 7th century BC ruins of a library. Also it's written on the city wall but I cannot find any reports or article about it so I'm just going to mention it as a fun fact. Anyway, a blog called George Smith was hired by a British Museum to translate it and the result was published as a Chaldean account of Genesis. I know, Gilgamesh, Chaldea, haha, <laughs> Fate Grand Order, yeah. Though I'd prefer if they kept the original title though, Shudur Elishani, surpassing all other kings. By the way, talking about British Museum, I think they sell a replica of this tablet here behind me and fuck, I really want it. <clears throat> Moving on, next is the Bible. But since most of you are familiar with it and this subject is a bit touchy, we're just going to skip it. Definitely not because I'm too lazy to research it. Anyway, yeah, important stuff, Bible. Yeah, um, sure, worth mentioning. Uh, what else? Oh, printed newspaper, Germany, 1609, that's important. It's a bit obsolete now because internet. Oh, the internet. Wait, 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 that's a bit too far. I'm saving it for the next section. You know what? This is going nowhere, so yeah, written stories been here since forever, and most of them can be their own video, so I'll give them their own video. Maybe. We'll see. Let's move on to the next section. The future of storytelling. Right, when we think about this kind of media, we think photos, movies, YouTube videos, blogs, all that kind of stuff. No, that's not what I'm talking about. There are new vessels for stories, yes, but visual component in oral storytelling isn't something new and theatrical plays been here since a long long time, so movie is just a modern take on theatrical play. Everything on the internet are either oral or written storytelling on a brand new platform, that's it. Don't get me wrong, the internet helped us to reach more people to hear our stories, but they're not a new form of storytelling. Then. What's new, you may ask? Ho ho, let me tell you. Role-playing video games. Specifically, because some games doesn't have any kind of story to be told at all. I'm looking at you, Bell Royals. Never before in the story of mankind can we enter the world where the story is set. Oh, we've dreamt about it. Even wrote stories about entering the world of tales and wonders in Arabian Nights and now we have the technology to do so. We have technology. Dun, 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 dun. Interactive storytelling is what it is. Even more with VR, but let's keep that for a future video so I can make an update video and milk more content out of it. Yeah. Now, we can finally experience the story as the main character. We can even do some meta stuff like Doki Doki Literature Club or Undertales where the fiction threatens to enter our reality. Yeah, fun stuff. I cannot wait for what the future will bring. And... Oh, fuck. I still need to tie it up with D&D. <laughs> so let's move on to the next section. Now, D&D is not about inventing new form of storytelling. It is a combination of all form of storytelling known to us. You got the oral part and the interactive part. It's a form of storytelling where the old meets the new. It's a modern equivalent of sitting around a campfire every full moon to tell stories about your ancestors, gods, whatever. Yeah, complete with the ritual and the feast and the superstition. Do not pretend like you don't have a specific ritual before you roll your dice. I'm looking at you. <laughs> anyway, some people will say that the DM is the storyteller. Yes, they're the main narrator of the story, but not the only storyteller. 
the players, the ones playing the main actors of the story, are also storytellers. It's an endearing form of storytelling where everyone involved are both the storytellers and the listeners. Every person will give their piece of the story and everyone will absorb it and react to it, making the story feels alive. Now, for those that didn't know, D&D originated from a war game. It was only a war and fighting simulation at the beginning. Only then it evolves into a platform for storytelling and roleplay heavy system. Why? Because our innate desire to tell stories and to add meaning to the battle. Regardless of the reasons, stories are everywhere. Much of our lives are devoted to telling stories about what we did, where we went, and, and who we spent time with. We have been telling stories for as long as history can see, and we will likely to continue to do so for the rest of our lives. I totally didn't stole this line from a Natio article. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, I didn't. It's too good to pass. Anyway, yeah. So every time you roll those dice and roleplay with your friends, you're keeping a very old tradition alive. And for those of you who haven't yet tried D&D or any other tabletop roleplaying games for that matter, give it a shot. After all, it is in our humanity to tell and listen to stories. Some of you might think that it is childish to play pretend, but it's about the emotion that it invokes, just like how we cried and loved when we were reading novels, listening to music, or, or watching movies. It's just another form of storytelling. And well, there you go. A video about history and tabletop games all at once. <laughs> it's a fun video, since it's what this channel is all about, and I consider myself a storyteller. That's what I really want to do with my life, <laughs> to devote myself to storytelling and stuff. I know it's not perfect, but hey, we poured everything into it, into this video, so yeah. Thank you for watching and good night.